Undervolting a processor, whether that's your CPU or your GPU, can have huge benefits for your system. Lower voltage means better power consumption, which in turn means better system temperatures and noise levels. But when it comes to undervolting a Ryzen processor, you're not really left with any good options. That is until now. Today we're taking a look at the new update to Precision Boost Overdrive, an AMD feature that was exclusively used for overclocking, but now includes undervolting. And I've just got to say, it works incredibly well. If you have a Ryzen 5000 CPU on hand, there's basically no reason why you wouldn't use this. So let's take a look at what you need to know. So just to recap, up until now, undervolting on AMD Ryzen has been a bit broken. Typically, you'd expect to just enter in a negative voltage offset of say minus 100 millivolts like you can with an Intel CPU, then have the benefit of the processor operating cooler, using less power, but at the same boost frequencies. That's how it's worked on Intel for years now, but that's not what we've seen on AMD Ryzen. Instead, when only lowering the voltage, you get some really odd and unexpected behavior where the undervolt appears to be stable, clock speeds appear to be stable as well, but you actually get significantly decreased performance. This left you with only one option, and that's a hard frequency and voltage cap. For example, manually setting something like 4 GHz at 1.12 volts. Although there you might get the improved thermals in those heavier workloads, this means that the CPU can't boost beyond that frequency in those lighter threaded workloads like gaming and everyday tasks. So the new update aims to fix all of that, which is great, but before we dive headfirst in and start adjusting a bunch of settings, let's first understand what we're adjusting in the first place. So the way that processors manage their own performance and power is based off of a frequency and voltage curve. They need higher voltages to stabilize higher frequencies, whereas lower clock speeds can get away with significantly less voltage. AMD Ryzen 5000 processors, for example, typically operate between 1.1 and 1.5 volts, with clock speeds between 4.2 and 5 gigahertz in that range, depending on the CPU. Another very important note, and something that does get mixed up quite a bit, it's the less demanding workloads that use one or two cores operating at higher voltages and higher clock speeds. Whereas the all core workloads, the heavier ones like rendering, that's where you'll see lower voltage and lower clock speeds across all cores. The CPU has to use those lower clock speeds and lower voltages to stay within a certain power threshold. Whereas that power threshold really isn't a factor when you're only loading one or two cores. So those higher frequencies and higher voltages become available. Now processors out of the box operate a bit more on the safe side in terms of voltage and clock speeds to give the user the most stable experience possible. In other words, the voltage and frequency curve is a pretty comfortable one at stock. This is why usually we also have quite a lot of breathing room when it comes to overclocking and undervolting. So the aim of undervolting then is to essentially take this stock voltage and frequency curve and shift it downwards. This pushes the processor to use lower voltages at a given clock speed, or from a different perspective, higher clock speeds at a given voltage. And this is exactly how we'll be adjusting the Precision Boost Overdrive 2 with a new feature called Curve Optimizer. You can basically just think of this as offsetting the default voltage and frequency curve of the CPU in the positive direction if you want to overclock and then in the negative direction if you want to undervolt. This can be accessed within the BIOS of the 500 series motherboards, but the BIOS also needs to be updated to one with at least the Agisa 1.1.8.0 firmware. So in short, it's 500 series motherboards only that will be able to do Precision Boost Overdrive 2. And even then, some of them don't even have the required BIOS update and firmware update. For example, my ASUS X570 Crosshair 8 Impact in my own production system doesn't have the update available, whereas the MSI X570 creation that I use for testing has 1.1.9.0. So some boards are going to be a lot more up-to-date than others. So definitely check the board that you have on hand. And probably the most unfortunate news is that this is only going to be for Ryzen 5000 only. And I did attempt this with a Ryzen 3000 processor, but the options in the BIOS were just unfortunate 
definitely invisible. So not sure if this is an architecture limitation or if just AMD is just hard capping this for Ryzen 5000. Either way, I would have loved to see some backwards compatibility here. But moving on, in the BIOS of the MSI X570 creation, we need to head over to the advanced CPU settings, then AMD overclocking. There we can enable precision boost overdrive and select advanced. The next very important setting before doing anything else is setting PBO limits to disabled. What this does is instead of raising the power limit and current limit values of the CPU as it normally does with precision boost overdrive, selecting disabled here actually forces the stock power profile of the processor. Then to actually start making adjustments, we need to climb into curve optimizer. There we're going to select negative, indicating that we want to lower the voltage and frequency curve. Then we enter in the magnitude that we want to adjust the curve in this field right here. Each unit of value here represents three to five millivolts, and at least with this BIOS and board, I can enter in a max of 30. That represents a negative voltage offset between 90 and 150 millivolts, and I think the exact value would depend on which area of the curve we'd be looking at. So I tested this with the 6 core 5600X, the 12 core 5900X, and the 16 core 5950X. Both the 5600X and 5900X passed through all of the testing with the max value here of 30, but the best undervolt that I could do with the 5950X was with a value of 12. And I think that's because the 5950X is already using a fairly optimized voltage and frequency curve and can't really be pushed beyond that. So now with the negative curve offset enabled, you would expect lower voltages and power at the same frequency and performance as that's what we expect from undervolting. But that's actually not what we get. Instead, since voltage is lowered and power consumption is lowered as a result of that, as well, the CPU sees that it has a lot more headroom before hitting its power limit, and so it uses that power and increases the clock speed. As an example, check this out. Here we're running Blender, comparing the 12 core Ryzen 9 5900X at stock in orange to the max undervolt that we can achieve with PBO2 with a negative offset of 30. The first graph that we see here, voltage, is basically the same, eventually leveling out to about 1.2 volts, although PBO2 is slightly lower overall, doesn't peak as much in the beginning and has lower troughs. Then looking at power in the middle, expressed as a percentage of the total power limit used, it's pretty much even. But then when we take a look at clock speeds, we're basically getting a free 200 megahertz overclock. That is, we're running almost 200 megahertz faster across all 12 cores at no additional cost to power draw, which also means no additional thermals. Both the processor at stock and with the precision boost to undervolt in effect, the CPU regulates itself to pull 100% of its available power, so thermals are about equal between them. Now, the result is a little bit different when we switch to only using a single core in Cinebench R20 as opposed to loading all of them in the previous test. Now, instead of the 5900X pulling up to 1.48 volts on a single core, it only pulls 1.37. Power is also reduced as a result, down to 39% from around 48. Oddly though, we do actually get a minor clock speed boost as well. So so in lighter threaded workloads, effectively we get a slightly faster, slightly cooler running processor pulling less power. Comparing thermals though, we can now see a big difference. That single core all of a sudden isn't so power or voltage hungry and runs up to 9 degrees cooler as a result. Again, we're actually running slightly faster clock speeds here as well with a bit of a higher score in Cinebench. We'll take a look at that in just a minute. As I mentioned, the undervolting results with the 5950X were a bit underwhelming. I was only able to set a curve offset of minus 12, but this still gave us around a 100 megahertz all core improvement at the same power and voltage. The six core 5600X results were pretty similar to the 5900X. Again, similar voltage levels, but with the PBO2 results offering a lower voltage peak in the beginning of the render when it's loading assets, then power consumption is dead even between the two, and clock speeds are close to 200 megahertz higher across all six cores. So what does this mean in terms of actual performance gained? Well, in Cinebench R20 with all cores enabled, the Ryzen 5600X gains around 8% with a precision boost to undervolt, the 5900X gains around 4%, and the 5950X only gains around 1% because, again, we couldn't offset the curve as much. The performance gains in Blender were pretty similar, 6% improvement for the 5600X, 7% for the 5900X, and then 4% for the 5950X. It's nothing huge, you'd definitely be able to get more than this with a manual overclock and more power 
power, but this is at equal power and thermals. It's essentially free performance. Loading only a single core though, we get some performance gains here as well, but the main benefit here, if you remember, was the significantly less voltage and power being fed to that single working thread, resulting in better thermals. Still though, there are some very small performance improvements here to enjoy as well, so it's a win-win. Gaming performance, on the other hand, I did not measure any improvements in at all when it came to gains in FPS. And just like our single threaded Cinebench test, the main benefit here is going to be the CPU voltage and power not spiking as high as it would at stock. So for gaming, expect slightly better thermals and power from your CPU, but about equal performance. So honestly, this is looking like an incredible feature for Ryzen 5000 users to take advantage of. Essentially, what we're getting is in all core workloads, a free 200 megahertz overclock. And then in those lighter threaded single core workloads, a very slight increase in clock speeds, but more importantly, lower thermals, voltage, and power. If on the other hand, you want to undervolt traditionally to achieve lower thermals across the board, you'll also need to reduce the PPT or power limit of the CPU. Because the processor auto regulates its clock speeds around its power limit, that's what you'll need to reduce in addition to the negative curve offset to prevent the processor from essentially overclocking itself to meet the power limit. I'm a bit annoyed that this isn't available on even my own machine that uses a very expensive motherboard just yet, but I'll definitely be keeping an eye out for future BIOS updates. So there it is, Precision Boost Overdrive 2. It's definitely worth checking out if you have a Ryzen 5000 processor, and I'll definitely be using this for future Ryzen 5000 builds. I'd love to know your thoughts down below in the comments. As always, a huge thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.